Dr. Phil. He claims he catfishes as a hobby. He thinks it's funny, and he has zero remorse. Is this all just an act to get attention? You've stolen nude photos of her and sold them? Oh, yeah. I make hundreds, hundreds of dollars selling these nudes online from catfishing these different individuals. And has no plans to stop. You've lied to all three of these people, correct? Oh, yeah, 100%. Arrest me! Arrest me! Did the Tanacon organizer change his ways? It bothers you to hear people still regard you as a scammer because of the Tanacon. You're so unorganized, Michael. You also did this to Jackson. Okay, that was 2017. Do you have the login information to the account? That's a yes or no question. Okay, I'm not going to have a conversation that's this defamatory when this is a prime example of someone who is literally using my name. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. Get ready. Take care of you. Through the years, I've had several guests contact me asking for help to find out who has been catfishing them. And today is a bit of a different story. This time around, the catfish himself has reached out to me stating that he does it as a hobby. He thinks it's funny, and he has zero remorse. Now, is this all just an act to get attention? Well, a few of his victims are here today to face this catfish who goes by the name White Plastic. They say his catfishing has turned dangerous, and yet there have been zero consequences for his actions. About a year ago, I got a text message. They were pretending to be this big YouTuber named Steve Will Do It. One thing led to another. It started getting really freaky and intimate. I thought I was in love. A few months ago, I reached out to James Charles trying to get an editing job. He actually asked for people to leave their contact information, and five minutes later, I got a text. Four months ago, I got a text. They said they were Montero, which I know is Little Nas X's real name. I was confused on how Little Nas X would reach out to me, like how he would get my number. But we shared a mutual friend, and I kind of made sense. I thought I was in love. We would have very erotic conversations. My reaction at first was skeptical, but I actually asked him if he could join me on a FaceTime call. I saw James's face, and he said, hi, how are you? Can you actually give me a second? I'll call you back. But I never received a call back. So I said, you know, why can't we meet? Like, what's going on here? I said, hey, why don't we hang out? Why don't we link up? Why don't we meet somewhere public? But eventually, he just ghosted me. I was invited to a restaurant, and when I showed up, he never answered my calls. I actually used an IP grabber and sent it to him to get information about his name, phone number, and everything. I found out that it was somebody named White Plastic. I heard that he just does it to influencers, and this is his thing. Five days later, I got a text saying, hey, this is White Plastic. I was catfishing you, and I was like... White Plastic isn't just some random person. I actually know White Plastic very well. He became my makeup artist. I would get him job opportunities, but he stabbed me in the back. I gave this person my address. I sent them money, and I also told them where I lived. I don't know what this person is capable of doing with my information, but it's definitely really scary. White Plastic admitted that he's been selling my pictures online for money, gift cards. He's been posted on these BBW fetish sites. It's disturbing. I wouldn't want to be on those sites. I'm not a porn star. It's very dangerous. White Plastic took advantage of me and my emotions. Yeah, I'm pissed off. Okay, guys, welcome. Hi. Uh, I'm glad you, you're here, and I'm sorry that you need to be. Mm -hmm. So... L let me start with you. I mean, you say you were friends. Yeah. Was, you knew this person. Oh, I knew him. You had actually hired him to yeah. do work? Makeup artist. So you would see him at a job or something, and then he would be contacting you 
as a false identity. Yeah, he would be. At the same time. Yeah, he would be like at my house and ask me for pictures as Steve. And I had no idea. I was blindsided by the fact that it was white plastic, somebody I knew, you know? Yeah. And Lars, you didn't know him at all, and he pretended to be. So he pretended to be James Charles? Yeah, but I've never met him. I don't know anyone who knows him. I've never seen his face. Like, I don't know how he knows who I am. Why do you think he chose you? Well, I did leave my phone number in a public comment section, but it was only up for like 30 seconds. And when I got the text, I didn't know that it would be the person who I wasn't reaching out to. Like, it was so random, but I mean, I'm just gonna be more careful because clearly random strangers on the internet will have a vendetta against you without even seeing you before. And then William, he pretended to be somebody completely different with you. Yeah, he pretended to be Lil Nas X. I mean, I thought he was really him and both of his brothers also followed me on Instagram so it made it more official for me to believe it. So I hit them up and I was like, that's cool. And so I was like, let's go to his release party. Let's meet, he's like, yeah. I said, hey, when do you wanna meet? All of a sudden, he ghosted me. He has victimized all three of you. Here he is. And he thinks this is funny. Lars, he set up meetings with you yeah. at Nobu, at the airport. I had paid him money, too, to get the reservation. So that's how he got my credit card info, because he actually wanted it through wire transfer. What did you need money for a reservation for? That's just what he said. But at the time, like, I believed it, because he literally FaceTimed me, but it ended up being like a video of a video on the FaceTime, but I literally saw his face and everything, so why would I not believe him? Okay, but yeah, th that's an important point. You FaceTimed him and it came up and it was mm -hmm. James Charles' picture. And this was the first day that we started talking, so I never asked yeah. to see him after that. Now, this white plastic, he's got certain celebrities he uses to catfish people with, like Lil Nas X, James Charles, Steve Will Do It, Jeffree Star. He pretends to be these people to reach out to others to get them to pay attention, I guess. And coming up, we're about to meet the catfisher himself that calls himself White Plastic. He says catfishing is his second business and it has become one of his favorite hobbies. It started off as just regular catfishing for me, but then it turned into something a lot more thrilling. I take these people's nudes and I'll sell it. I'm not being cocky, but I do think that I am that good at what I do. I mean, I wouldn't be running like a multi-thousand dollar business like with being mediocre. And later, you claim that he actually has defrauded you? Yeah. I'm not here because he promised me fame, and now I'm mad because I didn't get the fame. That money got to somebody's pocket. Where did the money go? It was my belief that she took that $30,000. I think she's having a little resentment towards me, given she, she can't move on. Tomorrow, imprisoned by anxiety. It's for all of us, because we all tiptoe around them. Lisa says the mood in the household is dependent on how Ted's anxiety is that day. The shades are always drawn. These girls, he's actually screwed. You say even the dog is showing anxiety. Absolutely, down to the dog. It's constant, it's relentless, it pulls you down, it wears you out. Are you ready to change that? That's tomorrow. Then on Friday. Have you ever had sex no. with anyone under the age of seven? No. We're talking about body language. With the behavior panel. When he says yes, he says no. Because I've got so much trouble with this. That's Friday. There are White Plastic has been using my nudes to catfish men all over. Plastic has multiple dating apps. I think it's mainly just to get pics out of guys. He's talked to hundreds and hundreds of people as me, to the point where I've gotten messages on Instagram, why are you talking to my boyfriend? I was at a bar one night. Plastic got my location. This guy comes up to me and says, hey, are you Diamond from Tinder? And I was like, what? The guy then tried to kiss me. And I was like, back up, you know? like. I don't know you. He shows me these graphic, months-long conversations, and I knew immediately that it was white plastic.
Well, Diamond, Lars, and William all say they are victims of Vincent, someone that calls himself white plastic catfishing, and believe there is something mentally wrong with him since he has no remorse about this whatsoever. But white plastic says he's fine. Catfishing is just an addiction, and he's not planning to stop. I've been catfishing people for a couple of years now. I've probably catfished hundreds of people. It's definitely like an activity. It's people like to play football. People like to go fishing. I guess I'm just a catfisher. It's just my thing. People on the outside are seeing it as like such a big problem. Like why am I catfishing all these people? He's such a horrible person. But honestly, I'm not murdering people. I'm not doing anything crazy. So I don't think it's wrong in my eyes. After I pick my victim, I'll just start to psychoanalyze. So it's all about outsmarting someone. This is deep, like this is a business. Like I have people on like payroll. I take these people's news and I'll sell it to all these different platforms that have ways that you can sell people's news. I'm not being cocky, but I do think that I am that good at what I do. I mean, I wouldn't be running like a multi-thousand dollar business. like with being mediocre. It started off as just regular catfishing for me, but then it turned into something a lot bigger and a lot more thrilling. Why am I catfishing regular people when I can be doing it on people that actually are entertaining? I'm not gonna go catfish Susie and watch her go to Publix and like meet up with Steve at like the deli section. Cause I was like, oh, like, let me pretend to be like James Charles and I'm Mass X. I just need like three seconds of their time to believe it's me. So like, I'll just like, pick up the phone and be like, hey sister, like, how was your day today? And they believe it every time. I'm not um, a total I like to send them Uber Eats. I like to send them flowers. I like to send them chocolates. Anything that'll make their heart flutter and think that I'm the person that they're talking to. I'll, for instance, when I catfished as James Charles, I sent PR packages palettes, makeup, brushes. When I catfish these influencers and celebrities and people, honestly, I never feel bad. If you're dumb enough to send someone nudes online that you have never met before, you deserve to be catfished because you didn't do your homework. You, you say you do this for both entertainment and profit. Correct. I make hundreds, hundreds of dollars <clears throat> selling these nudes online from catfishing these different individuals that I have people on, like, my payroll that I pay to get numbers, to get addies, to get everything that I need so that I can be successful and be rich. Well, in, in your tape, you said thousands and thousands of dollars, and now you're saying hundreds and hundreds, which is? Which um, is it? It's more like hundreds, and then it like gets into the thousands. So it sometimes peaks at thousands, but it's like hundreds. You've lied to all three of these people, correct? Oh, yeah, 100%. And wh what was your purpose in lying to William, for example? I don't even honestly know why I catfished him. It was so long ago, and he's just, like, not even, like, relevant in my life. It wasn't even, like, that long I catfished him. So he wasn't really a big one. This one was a big one, and then this one was a really big one. You're not answering my question, so you just did it randomly? Yeah, that one was just for fun. When you catfished Lars, you, you had him send you money for a reservation. Hell you yeah. had him drive out to Nobu. You had him drive to the airport. What's the purpose in doing that? Well, I noticed that, like, some of the things he was doing online, like, wasn't, like, really, like, cool, like, to, like, other people, you know what I mean? So, like, hit by other people, like, being mean to other people and, like, hurting other people, I don't really like that that much. One of my main focuses is that, like, when I'm catfishing these people, it's not all randomly it's not all because you know i'm just doing it for fun everyone that i do it to like there's a purpose and you you've 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 stolen uh nude photos of her and sold them you said oh for yeah how much? diamond diamonds photos i've gotten like thousands of dollars from because she's mm -hmm. just such a hot commodity yeah. well you've actually catfished people as her oh yeah i i made like profiles as you, all that. And when I'm selling these nudes, like, it's not like, oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Do you like the pics I used? No. Mm -hmm. I just want to know why he does it. Like, why? What is the point of it? Because he can't You're fix obsessed his with us. Uh, uh, up next, Vincent says he was catfished himself once, but yet still has not learned his lesson. But what will it take for him to stop? If anything, we'll talk about that next, because I have some things that he may not have considered.
actually, because of how you've answered my questions on tape, I, I predict they will arrest you. I want to talk about things that need to be talked about. Hate crimes in the U.S. rose last year to the highest level in more than a decade. Asian. Why am I being targeted just for looking the way I am? It gets worse stuff to sell. The carnage in our nation's schools has become painfully repetitive. I just started screaming her name, but I never heard anything like that. The police officers simply failed you. More intense, more inclusive, more informative than ever. The defunding plan has failed. It's a complete disaster. People will do desperate things in order to survive. You're not solving anything by arresting those people. We're not trying to win an argument. We're trying to solve a problem. Customers seem to be losing their cool at the drop of a hat. What the hell is going on? If you miss a day, you miss a lot. Oh, you're an influencer and you comment something that's like against one of my friends or maybe something that's transphobic, homophobic, racist, and like, I'm just like, why would you post that? I'll just catfish them. I see myself honestly as like a hero, bringing justice for some of these people that are just like not good to society. Honestly, sometimes it's not just the bad guys, but I have to get some of the good guys too, if you know what I mean. Well, Vincent says nothing is going to stop him from catfishing because it's a hilarious prank, even though his victims feel hurt. But Vincent says he'll attack negative influencers who are bad for society. So what he's doing is actually for good. Like uh -huh. he's some kind of moral police on the internet hitting out at people that are doing bad on the internet. But now you have catfished Diamond as someone else. You pretended yeah, to be someone else. It. Yeah, and gotten her to send you pictures. Yeah. And then you've taken those pictures and sold them, you said, for thousands of dollars. Yeah, correct, yeah. I'm just curious if, if you considered, if you procured these pictures fraudulently, then you got them through what's called fraud in the inducement. So you induced her fraudulently to give you these pictures. And then when you sell them, that's called conversion, which means like you conversion. took these ill-gotten assets, converted them to cash, and in thousands of dollars, that means that's a felony. So, Arrest me. Actually, because of what you how you've answered my questions on tape, I, I predict they will arrest you. Oh, I hope. Period. Period. Um, this is a very serious crime. I would predict that they would be very interested in you swearing out a complaint about this. Get those thousands of dollars. I got you again. Get those hey, thousands of dollars. It's a card with all the money on it that I stole from you, and you can pay for the court fees they with it. I know this is in the negative. You can pay for the court fees with it, baby. You can pay for the court, the court fees. You ain't even gonna have, no, have no money. We don't. I don't have a job. You said your job was in stealing images and selling nude photos from other people. Yeah, that's, that's my that's job. Your job. I do have a job. And you said you're so good in it that you actually have an enterprise because you have you have employees that work for you to Correct. do this. Yes. Right? Correct. Your business is to defraud people for money. My business is not to defraud people for money. It's just taking what they've already done and just maximizing, like, my maximal potential. Like, the people that I come after, come after that are my victims, mm -hmm. they're not... You know, they already have their stuff out there, some of huh. them, most of them. So well, it's a little hard to unring that bell. Uh, coming well, up, is it. there hope that Benson might see the error of his like ways that. here and stop catfishing others? We'll talk about that after the break. <laughs> I, I really wish you would take it seriously. I know that you're playing a character and that you're performing um, and that this is... I'm not is, playing a character. This is real and, life. So the fact I, that he's I know saying that I'm playing a character no, Don't interrupt like... me. Don't interrupt me.
a bad product may have been used, and you deserve cash. For Do you have any remorse for anything that you've done? Um, no, I don't have any remorse because, like I said before, honestly, like, everything I do is justifiable. A lot of the stuff, you know, that I know truthfully, like, behind the scenes, like, I know, like, every one of these individual people, why, you know, what they did and what they've been doing, and, like, they do have, like, their nudes online, they do have different things going on, that that's the reason why I catfish them. But, girl, just because we got our nudes online, that don't mean you can take them from us and sell them. Yeah, but you're, but you're... You gotta you're, get permission from us. Sense. You gotta get permission from us. I, I really, seriously, wish you would take it seriously. I know that you're playing a character and that you're performing um, and that this is... I'm not is, playing character. This is real and, life, so the fact I, that he's I know saying that I'm playing character... No, don't interrupt like... me. Don't interrupt me. Woo! I really hope that when you, you get home and you have an opportunity to reflect on this, that you really take stock and consider the fact that, you know, a prank is a prank, but there is a line that you cross that can have ramifications, and I, I hope you seek some legal counsel about that. Honestly, I don't think any of this was a prank, and I honestly don't like how I'm being played as a character, being victimized as a character, because this is real but life. Who's the victim here? I'm the victim. You ain't no victim. <laughs> You need, if you, a, you need help, that's what you need. Yeah, that's why I'm the victim, duh. Because I need help. What do you need help with? Well, I don't know. That's why I came here, because I thought you were going to tell me, like, what I need help with. I, I think you need help with your moral compass. I think you need help in developing empathy, where you s see things from other people's point of view. And I, I think you need help in understanding, just from a maturity standpoint, that there are consequences to things that you do, particularly once you become an adult. And those are all things that are learnable and changeable, and but you have to be motivated to want to do those things. And I think you would want to do something legitimate. And that's why I think you need legal counsel. Yeah, that part. Because I don't want to see part. I don't want to see you get in trouble. There are a lot of people out there that will take advantage of someone, and you've got to really do your homework and make sure you know who you're talking to and, yeah. and not talking to. And you can't give your power away. You you've got to hold on to that and not let your self worth and self esteem be impacted by people you don't even know. It, it, it's a serious problem with social media, and you just can't do that. You, if you're talented. Ride your talent, let it be, let, let it guide you in what you do and who you are, but don't give your power away to somebody that's jerking your chain and pretending to be something they're not. So we'll excuse you. Thank you for being here today. Thank all three of you for being here. Thank you for uh, helping us a little bit. Coming up, Michael, a social media uh, manager from Tanacon, was here last season and says he has changed his life around. We'll talk to Michael next. When it comes down to it, there's a really deep, dark, twisted, satanic side of Michael. This is so beneath me. I'm not going to talk about someone calling me satanic. If you have one person, two person, three people, four people that all have a common thread in their experience, the common thread is you. Closed captioning provided by... Michael says he suffered severe backlash, hatred, and harassment ever since his company organized the notorious Tanacon event that failed. Michael was on my stage last season where he says he received death threats and hate mail on social media and even face-to-face -face confrontations with some of the attendees, clients, and employees. Take a look at what happened. The first few hours of TanaCon went off flawlessly. And then my assistant runs up to me in a panic. The hotel had shut the doors. There were 20,000 people outside waiting to get in. I was getting death threats. I was painted as an evil villain. I was forced to file Chapter 7 bankruptcy. I felt like the safety of attendees wasn't even thought of. I'm not here to, to relive the past or talk to you about those kind of things. I'm here to heal. I'm surprised by your attitude now because you say you want to heal, but yet you're 
obviously very angry. I am. Michael has gone from being the golden boy in the industry to literally becoming a scam artist. I've seen him make multiple employees cry due to verbal abuse, embarrassment. If I say anything, it's only to drive my employees. How many times must you make somebody cry, though? Allie says her relationship with Michael is frightening, as he has even physically attacked her in the past. The way I was addressed started to become verbally abusive. You're my subordinate. You will obey me. I own you. It did get physical. When it comes down to it, there's a really deep, dark, twisted, satanic side of Michael. This is so beneath me. I'm not going to talk about someone calling me satanic. Literally not worth my time. I think that there's a common denominator. Look, if, if you have one person, two person, three people, four people that all have a common thread in their experience, so the cool. common thread is you. My next guest, Jackson, says, he was only 17 when he met Michael, who promised to build his social media career. One of our business deals was to start a clothing line together. Michael and I had two bank accounts set up. There was about $35,000. Michael was actually just pocketing the money. People were blaming me and saying that I was the one ripping people off, but it was actually Michael. Jackson. Like what? Did I do everything for your brand that you no! wanted? No! OK, well, that's laughable. I named the clothing line. And then why did nobody get the clothes? I don't know. What I expected from you was to come in and say, I had really good intentions, but obviously I blew it. And you've said none of that. I did apologize, and, and no, I have. No, you didn't apologize. You gave an excuse cloaked as an apology I with no so genuine remorse whatsoever. Well, since then, Michael has reached out to me again to discuss how things have changed in his life for the positive and how he wants to create a better platform for himself and his business. Uh, is he telling the truth now uh, or is he in denial? Last year, I came on the Dr. Phil show. Looking back at the show, I am glad that I did it. It gave me an opportunity to hear some tough feedback. The statement that stood out to me the most from that show was Dr. Phil looking at me and saying, you need to apologize. And, and I did apologize. You haven't apologized. And, and no, have. you didn't apologize. You gave an excuse cloaked as an apology I, with Dr. no so genuine remorse whatsoever. Even though I felt like I had apologized, maybe that wasn't the apology that everyone wanted to hear. No matter what the situation was, whether I was aware of it or not, those feelings are valid nonetheless. A lot has definitely changed since the show. It was definitely an eye-opening experience. I think a lesson that I learned on the show last time is that the truth isn't always what it seems. I try to just live and be myself and not find validation in what other people think about me. I surround myself with people who love and inspire me and help me be a better version of myself. I think it's time for the world to realize that self-love is more important than a like on Instagram. Well, Michael, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you. Thanks for having me. A lot has happened since I saw you last. A lot has happened. Definitely am a lot more selective about the people that I work with, given mm -hmm. the illuminating experience of last time. It's been crazy, to say the least. And you said that, you know, TanaCon was a big deal. It was a big thing that failed miserably and had to be shut down. And you said that the death threats haven't stopped, so there's still people online that are barking at you. I think it definitely, like, it still happens. You know, TanaCon was, what, four or five years now? I think um, it allowed me to kind of find myself and my own truth and not really care what other people think. And as hard as it may be to hear that message every day, it allowed me to kind of fight through it and um, to know that the only truth that matters is the truth that I know and the truth that God knows. And at the end of the day, that's how I can live my life. And I think it's important that everything happens for a reason. I can't change the past. You know, um, do I regret a lot of it? Would I change a lot? Maybe. But I think it made me who I am today. And for that, you know, it's made me stronger. You say it bothers you to hear people still regard you as a scammer because of the TanaCon and the confrontations that came out of that. No matter what mistakes I made in my past, it definitely still hurts and people don't give me a chance now, but it also has made me resilient. I can definitely hear the word no a hundred times a day and know that I'm not going to give up. Well, I know Michael is concerned about facing people from his past. We told him a former client has also reached out and wants to talk. I strongly advise that he stick around so we can hear both sides of this story to get 
to the bottom of this because I think if you're ever going to move past things, you, you have to deal with it. And we'll find out whether he wants to do that or whether he doesn't. We'll be right back. After I signed the contract with Michael, I started to realize that I had been scammed. I'm not making a single penny off of this. He snapped and said, well, actually, your card got declined this morning. So as of right now, we don't represent you. Actually, can you just go? And kind of shushed me away. What if you... I'm not using this girl's name because I'm not going to allow her to bring attention to herself to get more followers. She's not a name on the internet. She's irrelevant. She might have some followers, but followers don't mean anything. Anyone can have 2 million followers on TikTok. There's a difference between that and being a voice of activism or having a platform. And I put that girl, whom shall not be named, in a commercial. You think if you put someone in a commercial, they would be grateful or happy, but people are crazy and they like to try to use any opportunity to get more clout, especially when they're irrelevant. Well, Michael says he's changed his life around since the fiasco with his company role uh, in the failed influencer event, TanaCon, but his former client, Kristen, says he's still up to his old ways. Now, she claims they had an agreement to promote her social media and clothing company, but it all came crashing down because of Michael's lies. Let's hear what she says on tape. I became a social media influencer back in June of 2020. I had 1.6 million followers on TikTok, 150,000 on Instagram, 30,000 on YouTube, and 10,000 on Snapchat. I realized that monetizing my social media was a thing that I could do. That's how I came up with Happy Ghost. In the first month, I had already grossed over $30,000 in sales. A few months later, Michael reached out and said that he wanted to be my social media manager. Michael told me that he knew an investor who was very interested. I could become a millionaire. He would fly me out to Florida to go on his yacht, drive his BMW, and collaborate with other TikTokers out in Miami. 90% of the things he told me at the time I believed and I was stoked about. My contract with Michael stated that I would pay him $2,000 per month plus 10% of any revenues I generated and then he was getting 100% of my clothing brand to reinvest. After I signed the contract, I called him and I said, I'm not comfortable giving you any money up front. Maybe prove yourself to me first. He immediately got nasty with me and said that I already signed the contract and I agreed and that I had by midnight that night to send him $2,000. One day during our weekly meetings, he just snapped. He said, you're expecting too much. I have customers that pay me $50,000, $70,000, $100,000 a month. What you pay me is absolutely nothing. I started to realize that I had been scammed. And I said, look, I've been paying you for months now. You're not really upholding your side of the bargain. And I'm not making a single penny off of this. He snapped and said, well, actually, your card got declined this morning. So as of right now, we don't represent you. Actually, can you just go? And kind of shushed me away. At that point in time, I had given Michael about $10,000 and I didn't have anything to show for it. Very quickly, after I stopped talking to Michael, I started receiving emails from customers saying that they hadn't received their hoodies. I don't know where the money was going, but I know that people were placing orders and they weren't receiving them. Michael had access to my website, but I didn't. I know Michael is 100% responsible for all of this. I am no longer in social media. I don't have a clothing brand anymore. I struggle to pay my bills. I want people to know that when you're signing with him, you are quite literally signing your life away. Now, she says she's mistreated by you. Uh, she's here. I'm going to talk to her. Do you want to stay here while I talk to her? I will hear it out. Uh, it is very evident that this is a prime example of what people react when they're not guaranteed fame and everyone's entitled to it. But I'm happy to open a conversation. All right, well, let's bring Krista down. Kristen, how are you? Good. Happy Good to, to be you. here. You're saying that this went beyond just not arriving. Mm. You claim that he actually has defrauded you? Yeah. I'm not here because he promised me fame and now I'm mad because I didn't get the fame. I'm totally okay with not being in the spotlight. It's just simply the money that I paid to you, the things that you promised me you would do and then you didn't do, and now the ramifications and the things that I have to deal with every day. Uh-huh. Are there 1,400 orders somewhere that money came in for, people paid money and didn't get what they paid for? Where is that money and where is what they paid for? 
Where is it? Well, you tell me. You had the administrative password. I didn't. That money got to somebody's pocket. Where did the money go? Did it go into the business account? Prior to knowing Michael, every penny made went into a business account. Everything was taken care of. There were no orders that weren't shipped out. That's so... I was doing everything by hand. I was very on top of it. I was 17. I was so excited to have a clothing brand. So that's not true because we started getting messages from fans saying, hey, we ordered from your client, Kristen, and we haven't received our product. It was my belief that she took that $30,000 instead of buying more product and failed to ship out the orders, which created it a problem and I think she's having a little resentment towards me given sh she can't move on um, would you like the pictures Michael? I think because I, I have thousands of hoodies and sweatpants sitting in my closet in my bed then why haven't you shipped them out I didn't ship out the orders that you had access to I don't have your order door. you had the login I literally how didn't. was I supposed to make the orders Shopify and, and send them out if you now. didn't tell me Dr. Phil ordered a hoodie. If you don't tell me, you're that line of communication. I think this is a prime example. And then you ended the contract, and I'm getting blamed for it. cannot move on and like to use my name to continue to, to bash me when they're resentful. Well, it seems it very simple be. to me. If a customer pays X to get Y... It's very simple. ...that somebody is in charge of shipping that out. And I'm asking this question on behalf of 1,400 people that sent money in, where's their stuff? The items are sitting in the closet at my house. Okay. I do not have addresses or names or the money to send okay, them out who's because Michael had access to that information. Do you have the login information to the account? The last I That's had... That's a yes or no question. I mean, That's not an does. essay I question. I had access to it on my account because she hasn't removed me, but she does too. I do not it's have access to log in or do anything. If you would have... like to send me the order, the confirmations, the emails, the addresses, I would be more than happy well, I don't have that. to send these orders out. All I can see is... Uh, somebody does. It's her information. I literally can't get it. It's... Then where is it? Shopify. You're but it's so her Shopify. unorganized, Michael. You also did this to Jackson. Okay. Jackson. That was 2017. I it was the exact literally... same thing. You filed bankruptcy. Okay. Be... Okay. I'm not going to have a conversation that's this defamatory when this is a prime example of someone who this is literally... This is what I said name. in my interview. Do whatever you want to do. This girl is committing fraud. And now he's fraud. doing it on live TV. You just need to answer my questions. I think she should respond to my attorney. I think you should move on. I responded to your I attorney. I think you should refund all 14 people. I responded people. to your attorney. We'll be right back. If you... Well, I'm back with Michael, who is really interested in cleaning up his image, cleaning up his name, moving on with his life. Kristen is here. She said she wanted to launch a brand. She wanted to work hard and do it. She said she hired Michael. And you say that she paid you for 30 days. You say you paid him for five months? Around that. Was it five months or one month? Whatever it was, I know during the time we were working together, we put her in a commercial. We helped her get oh, her Facebook ads up. Without that commercial, up. since I can actually get in contact with you here, where is it? It it's never not for aired. You. It doesn't matter if it doesn't air. It never aired. It doesn't have to air. It's not for you. I'm just saying um, that this is another thing that you promised me you know, that never came to fruition. These are the images of the payments that Kristen made to Michael. During that time, I'm confident that, like that we did above and beyond. Whether she made it in social media is not my fault, and I think like, this I is a prime example. I did not say it was your fault that I didn't make it. Someone who's resenting the fact they didn't make it, I blaming me because the they refused to send out their I'm orders. I'm resenting the fact that I sent you, you ten thousand four hundred dollars, and you did sorry, not make me a they, penny back. It's not my job to make you money. Excuse me, I'm going to I'm going to give both of you a piece of advice. The two of you would do yourselves and each other a favor if you would put your emotional agendas aside. And you would figure out how to get access to the addresses of the 1,400 people that sent you money in good faith for product, get that product that you have in boxes at your house, and get it shipped out to those 1,400 people and tuck a note in, signed by both of you, that says, I apologize for the delay in the delivery of these products. I hope you enjoy them. And if you do that, you will both take a giant step in the right direction of creating some credibility in the marketplace. What do you recommend if I can't get her to ship out the product, which has been the situation? Oh, I believe if you I get the addresses, she will ship that. out the product. Well, because I don't think issue. it's going to do her any good sitting in her garage. What? And I think you want to do that. Oh, of and I hope that you do. And we're out of time.
Uh, I want to thank all of my guests today. For more information about today's episode, or if you'd like to share your thoughts on this, go to Facebook, go to Dr. Phil Fanatics, and say what you have to say about this. We'll see you next time. So long. <laughs>